So join me today with UnityAthletics.com as the fresh look men's basketball staff, head coach Paul Corsaro and assistants Mike Burris, Roosevelt Jones, and Parker Chitty. Uh, Paul, let's start with you. Um, obviously, like I said, you, along with the staff, is new this year. What about each of these guys that you brought with you uh, makes them the right candidate for this job at UND? Well, uh, Cody, first off, thanks for your time today and, and leading this conversation. But, um, you know, I'm fired up about my staff. Um, I, I love talking to all of them on a daily basis. I, first thing is I think all four of us, um, you know, we really get along, which I think from a day-to-day uh, interaction is going to be uh, critical. We're all wired the same way in terms of very competitive individuals, all come from pretty successful backgrounds. And uh, what I look for all three of these guys uh, when, when, when hiring them is I wanted them to fit you know, what a UND person means. And obviously our priorities as an athletic department, as a university, are to win as students, win as people, and to win as athletes. And I think that these, uh, these coaches uh, will provide an atmosphere in our organization, our men's basketball organization, uh, to help guide our students towards those goals. And uh, more specifically, you know, Mike Burris, um, you know, he's the first guy I hired and um, I wanted someone as a first year head coach that, uh, you know, I've, I've never been a head coach before, obviously. Um, I wanted someone with more experience than me w- working alongside me. Cause I know I don't have all the am- uh, right answers. And I think it's important to uh, surround yourself with great people and some and people with more experience than you in some cases. And uh, Mike's been a head, was a head coach for 15 years at the junior college level, won 252 games. Um, he also, the last three seasons, uh, finished in the top 25 nationally three years in a row. So he's not only been a head coach, he's been a really dang good head coach. And he's an Indiana guy, so he's a chance to move his family back home. And, um, you know, he has sat in the seat before that I now sit in. So what a great resource for me in terms of, you know, asking advice and, hey, Mike, what do you think about this or that? Uh, moving along alongside him to, to Roosevelt Jones, um, I don't think there's a person in Indianapolis who doesn't know who Roosevelt Jones is. It, it, the only way they do want it is if they're just not a basketball fan. If you're in Indianapolis or probably the state of Indiana, you're a basketball fan, you know who Roosevelt Jones is. Um, Butler University, obviously, the reputation they've built in recent years speaks for itself. Uh, Roosevelt was around two of the most respected basketball coaches in the world, regardless of level. If you talk about Brad Stevens of the Boston Celtics and Chris Holtman at Ohio State. Um, and I'm excited to learn from Roosevelt what he learned from those guys. And uh, I'm also excited uh, from a player development standpoint. I mean, Roosevelt made the NBA G League. He played for the Canton Charge, feeds into the Cleveland Cavaliers. Our players all want to get to where Roosevelt was. They all want to get there. So a guy that knows what it takes, who isn't too far removed, will really be able to help them develop their skills and hopefully attain their individual goals as we chase our team goals. And the other thing is, too, he's just, he's just a winner. He won at Butler. Um, you know, and then he's been the last two years, he's been in college coaching at IU Kokomo, the NAI level, and they've won 26 and 27 games respectively uh, the past two years. And just so anybody knows, in college basketball, kind of a threshold, you know, like, hey, like that team's a pretty good team if they won 20 or more games. Obviously, we're going to, as a program, we're going to try to win 35 games if we can here at UND. But typically, if you win 20 or more games, you're a really respectable program or you get somewhere close to that. And they won 26 and 27. He was an assistant coach there. So he's been a coach on a team that's had success. And I'm really excited to what he'll bring to our program. And finally, Parker Chitty, um, our graduate assistant. Uh, Parker played at Bellarmine. And I, I'm still, I, I still don't know how I hired somebody from our R tribal. I'm, I'm just kidding. Uh, I, I've gotten past that. But uh, I, I, on the whole, I, I respect the heck out of Bellarmine's basketball program. Scott Davenport is also one of the best basketball coaches, regardless of level in the world. I really believe that. And their, pro, their, their, their success as a program speaks for itself. And anyone who's a part of that program can add something to our program here at the University of Indianapolis. I really believe that. Um, also, um, I wanted someone aside from myself that had a knowledge of the GLBC. And Parker, having spent three years in the GLBC, brings another person to our staff that knows the tendencies of other teams and you know, uh, strengths, weaknesses, what have you. And finally, he's the son of a son of a high school uh, coach here in Indiana. His dad's an Indiana basketball coach. So another Indiana connection. We have four Indiana guys, guys with Indiana connections on our staff. Uh, Parker brings that as well. And, you know, comes from a po- coaching pedigree. It's, uh, it's not an easy business. It's, it's tough, a lot of hours, a lot of hard work. And someone who understands that, 
I think will go a long way. And everybody on my staff has jumped all in, two feet in. They're ready to go. They're, they're UND through and through, and we're really excited to get rolling. Yeah. Um, so then, Mike, let's just go right to you then. What does that 15 years of head coaching experience, like Paul said, um, he valued with you? What do you think that brings to the staff? Uh, experience. Um, you, you know, I think I can be a sounding board for Coach Cassaro. Um, you know, anything he wants to throw my way. I, I dealt with different situations from players off the court to game management, game decisions, um, you, you know, just running a program. You know, kind of, you've, you've kind of been a CEO of, you know, fundraising where we were at the, the junior college level. We had to, you know, take a hat off and, and put another hat on. So I, I hope to be able to bring – to coach, uh, you know, just sounding board, um, you know, peace of mind on his decisions. Uh, you know, he hired us and told us not to be yes men, you know, so, you know, be able to, to give him a, something to, to chew on. And obviously he makes the final decision, and rightfully so. But so uh, I'm just excited to be here. Um, you know, being the old man on the staff at 41, uh, being around Coach Casaro, man, is uh, – I feel like I'm 21 again uh, this week. It's been great. Uh just the energy level that, that our guys have brought, uh, our staff's brought. Uh, it's going to be a fun time to be a Greyhound, and uh, we're looking forward to, to packing Nickerson Hall, and, and uh, our guys are working their tails off right now. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so, Rose, like Paul said, and everyone knows in the city that you have a ton of experience here. Um, what advantage do you think that brings um, to this new role as an assistant at UND? Um, I think it brings a great energy uh, to the city and the area and to Nicholson Hall and bringing fans to the area just because we got all guys from this area. So guys are known, people are in the, around the area knowing who we are. So I feel like they bring a great atmosphere. And with me, I think I can help bring a, I'm, cause I'm still pretty young. So I feel like I can really connect with the guys. I'm not that far out from removed from playing basketball. So like uh, Coach Cesaro said, I can know what they want to do if they want to get to the next level. Like, Certain steps you have to take, I can teach them on and off the court. You can work on the court, but if you make bad decisions off the court, that'll also affect how you want to go and far, how you want to go far in life. So I can be able to teach those things to them. Yeah, definitely. Um, so Parker, how do you think your experience in the GOVC the last few years with um, uh, arguably the best program in the last 10, 15 years at Bellarmine, how do you think that helps um, coming over to another GOVC school? Um, for me, it's more of like I know what to expect. I know what I'm looking for. Um, so whenever they are talking about what kind of offense we're going to run or what defenses we want to do, I can kind of see what might um, be a problem and what can help us. Um, mainly just knowing just knowing what teams do, their tendencies. Um, a lot of their schools that we play, they have a lot of the same players from last year. Um, so I, I, I'm going to know those kind of guys. Um, the guys that are returning, um, for like the teams that we play, I'm going to know who they are. I'm going to know what they like to do. Because um, that was one thing at Bellman, we were very big on, you know, it was watching film and figuring out what everyone likes to do. We, we try to take away your um, your go-to, your plan A, and so you got to do a plan B. Um, so that was the biggest thing for us at Bellman. And just bringing that kind of knowledge um, of, of the GLBC to, to UND staff and being able to help those guys guys out that way, um, That's I think that's what I'm, I'm going to bring. So, Rose, how do you convert that success that you had at Kokomo the last couple of years into um, continued success at UND? Um, well, I had a lot, I, I wore a lot of hats when I was at Kokomo. I was the only assistant coach. So I basically kind of did everything. So I feel like coming now to UND where I won't be able to have to do as much, but still is capable of, I feel like I can bring uh, more to the table. Like, um, like we did study tables, like my individual workouts that I do with guys when I was at, uh, Kokomo, I did all the individual workouts, so with guards and bigs, so when we're out there and Coach Casaro, whichever group we have me work with, I feel like I'll be able to get into details, have workouts ready for those guys and be able to prepare them for when we step onto the court. So, Mike, what, what's, what are you most excited about um, coming here? Uh, one, being back in Indiana, uh, Indiana has been special to me growing up. Uh, you know, I grew up an hour south of here, just south side of Bloomington, Indiana. Uh, two, you know, I'm familiar with a lot of history of UND basketball. Being two and a half hours away at Olney Central, uh, you know, Coach Casaro recruited our guys uh, when, when Coach Gerard was the head coach. So I, I've seen the success they've had with Coach Waltman, Coach Sturgeon, uh, you know, Coach Gerard. 
and, and we want to take it to the next level. Um, and, and getting to know Coach Casaro the, the past season when he was recruiting our point guard Jalen Moore when he was at Purdue Fort Wayne, his, his personality, his energy, it, it, you just want to be around him. And uh, that's what I'm excited about is just coming in here and, and, and going from a head coach to an assistant where I can be all in with our guys. And, and, and he's the head coach. He's got to worry about some of those different issues that I've had to deal with this team. So I can just come in here and try my best to coach our guys up, uh, you know, help coach, you know, think about different things, different ideas, uh, work alongside Rose and, and, and Parker. But, you know, this is not a, your typical coaching change where the cupboard's bare. I mean, there's a lot of talent in, 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 on our roster and in, in our lineup, uh, our incoming recruiting class. Uh, I, I'm, I'm Jack because this is a, a great opportunity. And, you know, we will we'll continue to win and attack. You know, we're going to win, as, as Coach talks about all the time, as, as people, students, and, and then lastly, players. And, you know, high-character guys, high-character staff, and I'm just really excited to be a Greyhound. And, uh, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, sooner than later, we're, we're all on the floor and, and getting after it. Yes, definitely. Um, so, Parker, what, what made you – what about UND made you interested for – this is your first coaching job? Well, uh, I did my research, that's for sure. I knew a little bit about Coach Cassara, and I – did my research about him, asked a couple of my buddies that played for him in the past, and everything I got was always positive feedback. Energetic, he's very, very strict, but he's very, very good at what he does, and that's something that I need. And he, he, he's going to hate me for what I say, but he's OCD, and I love it. And um, But he's just somebody that I, I can see myself working for. And, and just been here this week and over the past couple of weeks, when we, we talk on the phone almost every single day, and it's, and it's always like, yes, sir, but – at the same time, I know he's helping me become a better person, but also a better coach. Um, so just being able to look up to him like that, um, and then also having Coach Burris and Coach Jones, like it was an easy decision. Um, he offered me the job. And we were joking about it, but he offered me the job. I told him I was going to think about it for a couple of days, and I called him back an hour later. I, I, I couldn't wait. I was just ready to go. But it's just being for, playing or working for somebody like like Coach Sara and Coach Burris and Coach Coach Jones, like it's you can't beat that. High energy guys. They love what they do. Uh, I, I think I've sweat more in these practices of being a coach because we're going so much than I did a player at Bellarmine. We're just getting after it on the court, and I love it. Parker, that's it. they're voluntary. We're not running practice. They're voluntary workouts. Uh, they are voluntary, but we we call it practice. <laughs> <laughs> it's practice in my book. Yep. Right. So, Paul, now you've been on the job for a few months now. Um, got your staff rounded out. What we're starting to get into – Hopefully everything kind of gets a little better and we're going to have a season on time now. But what what excites you the most about ending your first season as a head coach at your alma mater? Being back home, you know, Lewandy's home to me. And it's really special. Like, um, you know, it's cool. Like I, I when I pull into the office every day, I have a big smile on my face. I don't feel like I'm I don't feel like I'm at work. Uh, this it, to me, um, you know works what you do for money like and that's not what I'm doing I'm, I'm just fortunate enough to get paid to live out my passion and, and what I love doing every single day and to do it at a place that uh, means a lot to me and see a lot of familiar faces every day uh, that's really neat and my guys have just been awesome these voluntary workouts that we're having like um, you know they don't have to be here and we we, we got back on the floor with them on Monday and all, all of the returners opted in and man like I I'm watching them and we're, we're further ahead in four days and I thought we'd be in four weeks, you know, and just, it shows the, um, their level of commitment over the summer uh, that they had in terms of, you know, working out and, you know, um, you know, treating their bodies right and getting their minds right and the dedication they've had. And that's pretty cool to see that we have some guys that um, are ready to roll and, you know, I'm, I'm excited coaching them. And aside from just being back home, um, the guys that I'm around in terms of our student athletes on a daily basis, man, they're really firing me up as well. Awesome. Well, um, thanks guys for joining me today. Hopefully we can have more of these conversations in person soon um, and get on the court here in a couple months. Cody, we appreciate your time, man. Thanks for doing this. Sure. Thanks, Cody. Thank you, Cody. That was good. Appreciate it.